Beauty has always been an asset to actresses, but in old Hollywood, it could be their main draw. Ava Gardner never believed she was a talented actress, but she was always an expert charmer. It put her in the arms of many of the era's biggest names. Keep watching as Ava Gardner's deathbed confessions reveal the shocking truth. Before the men and fame, Ava Gardner was born December 24, 1922, and grew up in Grabtown, North Carolina. She grew up poor and had no special education, but her mother always believed she could be a movie star. She didn't believe she was a great actress, but thought her looks could get her through the door. They eventually did. Her sister's husband taped photos of her to his Fifth Avenue office. MGM took notice and scheduled an interview. They couldn't understand her because of her southern accent, but a silent screen test showed her off in the right way. She was signed as a walk-on for $50 a week and started taking voice lessons to remove her accent. Her relationship with Mickey Rooney Ava and Mickey met on her first day at MGM. It was a bit awkward because he was dressed in drag at the time. He wrote in his own memoir that, quote, everything in me stopped when he saw her. He kept asking her out for dinner and it eventually worked. Les Peterson, his publicist, tried to squash the budding romance. He ordered Mickey to stop seeing Ava, fearing that the relationship would cause a stir. It did, but the couple didn't care, even when the gossip columns caught wind. Ava was a virgin when she married Mickey Rooney in 1942, but claims she, quote, caught on very quickly. They both knew what to do in the bedroom, but it wasn't enough to sustain them for very long. Other men. Ava's love life didn't improve after that. She went through a string of men that weren't right for her. The first was Howard Hughes. He was a bit obsessed with her, but also generous in paying for her dying mother's medical care. Despite it all, she said she never loved him. This may have been because of his strong racism. Next, she married band leader Artie Shaw, who left his wife for her. She called him a bully who always put her down and made her doubt her intelligence. She even got an IQ test to ease her mind and it came back with reasonably high results. She's also grateful that it encouraged her to get a better education. The struggle unfortunately also led her to start smoking and drinking more intensely. Artie left her one week after their first anniversary. The betrayal broke her heart. Her next major relationship was with George S. Scott. That was even worse because he was physically abusive. Her relationship with Frank Ava Gardner was the type who could bring in anyone with a single look, not just Mickey Rooney. One day, she met Frank Sinatra. He was married at the time and had a child. It didn't matter because he became convinced that Ava was his true love on their first date. It wasn't everyone's idea of an ideal meeting. They were both drunk and drove from Palm Springs to Indio, California, and shot out streetlights and store windows with a pair of 38 rifles. They were arrested, but the studio paid for them to be released. She also called him the love of her life. The relationship didn't last forever because Ava had a passionate affair with Robert Mitchum, who was married. She came clean about the relationship to Frank, and Robert ended it to avoid a fight that could leave one of the men dead. She and her best friend, Lana Turner, always seemed to go with the same men. This included Artie and Frank, and Lana begged her to leave him. She didn't listen and instead went to his door to make sure he had left his wife. There were plenty of fights, and Ava even aborted two children during the marriage. Frank was reportedly devastated. He'd already been struggling with depression due to losing his singing ability and having his wife be the one with a career. He even attempted suicide more than once. They divorced in 1957, but somehow remained friends for the rest of their lives. It was a complicated but entertaining love story. Ava's Regrets Ava became a fading flower in her final years with her well-known beauty slipping away. She was also feeling the effects of a stroke that the world knew nothing about in 1986. In 1990, a few of her biggest regrets came out. She said she wished she'd focused on having a family and getting a better education. She also admitted that if she ever got married again, it would be a remarriage to her beloved Frank Sinatra. Their relationship may not have been perfect, but it seemed to have the best potential. Writing Her Secret Confessions Ava took a final photo shoot in her last years. She began to realize that her young beauty was fading, and while she said life wasn't over because of it, she admitted it hurt. If her acting career was over, she had to do something else to survive. She decided she could either write her memoirs or sell her jewels, 
and she was, quote, sentimental about the jewels. She hired journalist Peter Evans to ghostwrite her memoirs in 1988. The book was called Ava Gardner, The Secret Conversations. When he first got the call to begin writing, he hadn't met Ava in person yet. He jokingly asked if Frank approved, and she said it didn't matter. He says perhaps he shouldn't have taken the call. He was already working 15 hours a day on his own novel, but a request from a Hollywood icon was too enticing to pass up. Eleven days later, he was at her apartment in her London mansion. He asked her why she wanted to write her memoirs now. He gathered the tapes from their final interview to create a personal story. That included her most personal, secret deathbed confessions before her death on January 25, 1990. Mickey's Unfaithfulness Ava was a known femme fatale and had plenty of affairs, but that didn't mean she didn't get cheated on. Her first husband, Mickey Rooney, slept with another woman in their bed while Ava was in the hospital recovering from an appendectomy. She says he was a major womanizer who, quote, went through the ladies like a hot knife through fudge. Her best friend Lana Turner had slept with him before Ava and gave him the nickname Andy Hardon. Ava didn't leave Mickey as soon as she discovered his unfaithfulness. He tried to convince her he loved her and she wanted the attention. He would also try to win her over with gifts. It was still humiliating to know what he had done. She'd bring it up and add in jabs about his height whenever they fought, which was often. The unfaithfulness was what ended the relationship, though. She says it became clear how deep his affairs went on the day she left him. They'd already argued and he was drunk and ignoring her, ready for a fight. All of a sudden, he took out a book full of girls' numbers. He and his friends started reading them off and saying which ones were good in bed right in front of her. This was the final straw. She kicked him out and he went back to his mother's house. He tried to call her and even to kick down her door, but she wouldn't budge. She also said she didn't want to ruin his career by revealing all of his affairs to the public. She saved that one for the secret confessions in her memoir. Frank's Involvement Frank and Ava once had a secret pact to never write their memoirs. Newspapers had offered him plenty of money. The New York Daily Mirror tabloid was willing to hand over more than he earned for a small movie called Meet Danny Wilson. He needed the cash, but nothing would make him abandon his principles. Frank apparently held on to his desire to not have his memoirs published until the day he died. He had a few secrets of his own he didn't want published. He sued both Peter and the BBC for mentioning his often assumed but never confirmed mob associations. That wasn't enough to kill the book because it went along after his death in December of 2004. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Ava Gardner? Let us know in the comments section below.